It's time to apply what we've learned last time and to build something interesting. We'll start with simple things and by the end of this tutorial, we'll finish up with a complex effect. In the first example, I'm going to show you how to add a guitar part if you already have one. Have a listen to this track. And now this version. No, I didn't record a distortion guitar. I simply used an M multiband distortion plugin and used a modulation to distort only those parts that I wanted. Here is what I did. First, I appoint a modulator to the dry wet parameter. I wanted to use a step sequencer. However, before editing it, I selected the sync to host mode to make sure the acoustic guitar and the sequencer is in sync. I decided to go with a one straight note. Next, I put the step sequencer controller to 100%. Now a fun part. I open the sequencer editor and start experimenting with different shapes at different places. No advice can be given here. Simply use your taste and imagination. When I was happy with the sequencer, I adjusted the value, maximal value, and smoothness to my liking. Done. In the second example, I'm going to use M Reverb for some creative reverberation. Usually a reverberation is a kind of set and forget type of effect. It seats nicely on background and, well, that's all. But see what can be done with modulators. The original. And with M Reverb. Now, the reverb grabs much more attention. In fact, it doesn't sound as a reverb at all. Rather, a strange percussive instrument. Unlike the first example, here I used all four modulators. It may seem a lot. However, the idea is pretty much the same as with M multiband distortion in the first example. Let's have a look. I pick on four controllers I like to modulate. They are dry and wet, width, EQ bands frequency and EQ bands gain. I started with linking the dry wet controller with the first modulator. Next, I made sure it's in sync with my host program. This time, I used two straight notes for the length. Again, after some experimentation, I came up with this sequence. Then I did pretty much the same with the width parameter. The only difference is the sequence itself. Unlike the previous two controllers, I didn't want the EQ band's frequency and gain to be in sync to host mode. I wanted to bring in some diversity each two bars, so I set them to arbitrary values. I also turned the smoothness to maximum to avoid clicks in the middle of the dry wet and width sequencer steps. Basically, that's all. The third example is a barber pole phaser effect. As you know, in the classic phase effect, its all-pass filters move back and forward all the time.
In the barber pole phaser effect, however, the filters constantly move in one direction and thus create an illusion of an infinite phase effect. Of course, we can't build a plug-in with an infinite number of filters, but what we can do is create an effect whose filters work when they move in one direction and will get turned off on their way back. To get that, choosing a plug-in like the M Multiband Phaser seems an obvious choice. It has all the parameters and modulators necessary, but despite all its features, M Multiband Phaser doesn't provide an individual access to its filters, which we need. Thus, we have to reject this idea. Instead, let's try to investigate a type of effect the phaser does and whether we can find a way to emulate it. I leave the investigation part to you and I do encourage you to do that. Briefly, a phaser effect creates peaks and notches in a signal's frequency response, which follows some particular rules. And when I hear the phrase frequency response, the first thing that comes to my mind is an equaliser. Fortunately, Melda Production has a plug-in with a good filter choice and modulators. It's the M filter. So, here's my plan. I'm going to make filters being active only when they move to the right on a frequency axis. And on the way back, I want them to be off. Having done my study, I know I need to pig filter type for the job. And to make it move, I'm going to apply the first modulator to it, like this. The sine wave isn't going to work here because I want a filter to spend as much time as possible in an active stage and to return to a start point very quickly. But using the sine wave will make both stages of an equal duration. I need the saw wave instead. Now the filter moves as I want it to. I set the range modes so that the filter moves between 150 hertz and 20 kilohertz. Next I'm going to make the filter cut on its move to the right and to be at 0 dB on its move back. Appointment of another modulator to the gain parameter would be the first choice. However, doing so, I can run out of the modulators very quickly. How about making the first modulator to produce two different type of modulating signals for controlling two different targets? Can I? Sure I can. First, I must link the filter's gain controller to the same modulator, like this. Or you can use the learn function again. Now, I'm going to use the transformation curve editor to convert an original modulating signal into something I need. As we learned in the previous tutorial, the horizontal axis represents input values and the vertical one, the output ones. The ascending line in the middle represents the transfer function. The idea is to take an original modulating signal and to create a new one out of it. There are three simple rules you need to know at working in the transformation curve editor. Rule number one. The horizontal line cancels any change in the original modulating signal and sets the fixed value defined by its position on the vertical axis. Let me demonstrate it in the gain controller's behavior. Here is the gain parameter controlled by the sine waveform as a modulator. Now, if I create a horizontal line at the bottom of the transformation curve editor, the gain will stop at its lowest value. If I move the line in the editor up and down, the gain will follow my movement. In such way, I'm overriding the modulator's waveform by a fixed value. Rule number two. The descending line inverts a modulator's action. For instance, if I divide the initial ascending line in the middle by adding a point and direct the second half downward, I'll invert the second half of the sine wave. As you can see, instead of going up and down, the gain goes down twice. 
Rule number three, tilting the transfer function towards a vertical position speeds up a change in the new modulating signal. Have a look at this example. You already know why the gain doesn't go up and stay at zero dB during the second half of the sine wave, right? Now, see what's happening if I shift a break point to the left. The gain starts moving faster. Back to a conversion task. After some experimentation, I've come up with this curve. And here's how it works. The top horizontal segment, B, C, makes the output signal stay at its maximum value during most of the input signals period. That'll make the filters gain staying at some value that I'll define in the parameters panel. However, I don't want it to jump there immediately. I need some smooth transition from zero dB to that value. And that's what the CD and AB sections are for. Now, if I look at the filter's behavior, I'll see that it moves exactly how I wanted. At the first part of the filter's movement, its gain slides from zero dB to minus 12 dB. After, it stays there for most of the movement. Next, at the end, the gain rises up to zero dB and the filter jumps over to the beginning of the circle. I'm happy how the filter works. What I need now is the same frequency response as the phaser effect creates. Its actual response consists of peaks and dips. Sure, there are parameters influencing that, for instance, the number of all-pass filters, their distribution, a feedback, etc. But let's start from simple things. I'm going to use one of the brilliant features that M-Filter has, harmonics. It's located on the right in the bands panel. It multiplies a filter's response to a frequency axis. That is, if I move it, I'll get more dips, or dips and peaks, repeating themselves via one octave. I set it equal to minus 70% to get peaks and dips similar to the phase effect response. Let's hear it. It resembles a phase effect very well, doesn't it? There are two problems though. The first and obvious one is that our phase effect lasts as long as the filter is active. When it's coming towards the end of the frequency range, the effect is disappearing. The second issue is when the filter jumps over to the beginning, we can hear a perceptible sound defect. I'll play it again and you can pay attention to it. Sounds like a soft click. I'll start from solving the second issue first. The reason that causes it lies in the very fast, almost instantaneous crossover from 20 kilohertz to 150 hertz. Then, if I slow down that jump, I should expect the click to disappear. I'm going to use the smoothness parameter. As you can hear, the click does become even softer, but it hasn't gone completely. Moreover, as I start shifting the smoothness to the right, I can hear another defect manifesting. Apparently, the smoothness doesn't help here. Then, I'm going to appeal to the transformation curve editor again. Open it, turn it on, and add this segment, BC. By doing so, I give away a part of time the filter spends on its movement to the right for its fast move to the left. See what's happening with the point B. The more I shift it to the left, the longer it takes for the filter to come back. I can reverse its movement if I want to, but I don't need to do that, so I leave it over here to make that click gone. However, now if you've noticed, the band's gain has gone down when the band is approaching 150 hertz. To avoid that, I need to go back to the gains transformation curve editor and make a small change right here. I must add DE section. Moreover, its duration and BC lasting in the band frequency transformation curve editor on a horizontal axis must be equal. Now, the band's gain will stay at 0 dB on its move back from 20 kHz to 150 Hz. Perfect. Now, 
to the first problem with the lack of filters. Well, this is an easy one. All you have to do is repeat what you've just learned with another three filters. No, I'm not laughing. Simply save all what you've done as presets and use them for making new bands. Fortunately, Melda Production provides a comprehensive preset system. Having done that, you will get all four filters doing the same job simultaneously. We don't want that. Somehow, we must spread them in time. To do that, open the advanced setting window. Find the phase controller. It's responsible for defining a start point of a modulating signal's waveform. As you know, the full waves period is equal to one circle on 360 degree scale. Then, if we divide it into four equal parts and use those values for those phase parameters, we'll make all four bands move along the frequency axis on a equal distance from each other. Here are these values, 0, 90, 180 and 270. Enter them as the parameter of a phase at each filter. The last thing to decide is whether you want the plugins to be in a sync to host mode or run on its own. In the first case, go to a modulator's rate panel, click on the sync tab and select a note you like. Do it for all the four bands, of course. In the second case, click on the frequency tab and select the sync group one for all bands starting from the first. Now, the frequency of the first band will define the frequency for all four. Congratulations, you've built your own phaser effect. Where can you go to from here? Well, you could appoint multi-parameters for some key controllers, for example. You could add some randomization to the modulating signals or play around with the phase values. But most of all, you should apply the tricks you've learned here to build your own original effects. By the way, if you still hear some clicks when the band moves quickly back, it's because the plugin adds removes harmonics filters on the fly. Harmonics parameters, remember? To defeat clicks, go to the band settings and set the harmonics maximal count to one. Then limit the top frequency range to 10 kilohertz in each modulator for the band's frequency. That's all for now. Happy modulating. Mm -hmm.